Come on. All right, you may find your seat. Let's go. Front row. They're in the danger zone. Sometimes I spit when I talk, so. Hey, I'm so glad to be with y'all for real. I know I introduced myself this morning, but my name is Cameron Andoni. Uh, man, and I, I love Colorado. I think I'm going to move here. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are, y'all are amazing. They call us Texans. What are y'all, Coloradoites or Colorado? Wait, so I can't, Coloradans? Aladdins? Coloradans. So, man, Colorado's got to go on. I haven't seen snow in like five years, so it was beautiful, man. But, hey, I'm seriously, I'm so excited to be with you. Uh, greetings from my beautiful wife. I have a wife named Spencer, and she is unbelievable. We have a little daughter named Carter J., uh, and she is the most beautiful thing. She loves Adidas. If you go to my Instagram, we're trying to get her sponsored by Adidas. So we're, we'll see what happens. But, man, love being a dad. And uh, I'm just, I love this church, man. I love your pastor. How many people love Pastor Evan? This is amazing. I, I just want to make this clear. Uh, man, I've had the opportunity to go to a lot of places, get to speak of a lot of, a lot of different places. And I truly believe this, that you have one of the greatest youth pastors in America, and I, not a lot of pastors, I'd say, well, I mean, there's some, but for the most part, for someone to be able to preach really good, but also to be able to love people more than the stage, it's, it's not, uh, a lot of times it's the other way around, so brother, I'm glad you're my friend, man, I honor you, and I, I'm just, I'm going to tell you, in a few years, I, I don't know what God's going to do, do through your pastor, but I do know this, that one day you're going to be look up, looking at him. He's going to be preaching in front of thousands of people. You're going to be like, man, I know this man. So, pastor, love you so much. Come on, one more time. Can we honor your pastor? I'm telling you, you never want to get too familiar with your leaders, because I'm telling you, the moment you get too familiar is usually about the time you get a little comfortable with their gift, and a lot of times when you get familiar, it makes it a little bit more difficult to receive, and so for you, you need to just tonight, throughout this weekend, why don't you just come up and share a time with your pastor that he did something where it really spoke to you, that he blessed you. We need encouragement a lot. I just want you to know this is a thankless job, and sometimes we think like, oh, they're, they're doing great. They have God. Well, I want you to know just like the enemy attacks everybody, like all of us, he also attacks your pastor as he shared last night. So make sure you encourage him, love on him, and you got a great pastor. So my pastor... I want to give honor. My pastor, I got a pastor named Dustin Bates. He's unbelievable. He let me come here, lets me travel and speak places. So I want to honor him. And I also have one of my, my, my good friends with me, Logan Murphy. If you saw him, he's the one who kind of, he's like a giant. He's like the most swole man ever, but he's unbelievable. You're going to hear him speak a little tomorrow, hear his story. He's a mighty man of God. He's going to be a pastor one day. He's going to change the world. And so love you, bro. Thanks for flying with me, even though he didn't really have a choice because I'm his boss. So that's a good thing. But hey, uh, I, I just want to make this clear. I'm a hollaback preacher, and this is what that means. I'm going to preach really long unless you like talk back. I have a saying at our church, and we say this, and it's going to help you be able to activate your voice. We say a quiet church, and then everybody yells dead church. So I just want you to practice this, because it really, really, just trust me. Watch this. So I'm going to say a quiet church, and you're going to yell dead church. Just watch, okay? I believe a quiet church is a dead church. Just sounds good, right? Here's the thing. How many people played sports before? I'm a sportsman, uh, and for me, when I play sports... I don't like to sit on the benches, you know what I mean? Like, I like to, I like to participate, I don't want to spectate, and I want you to know when it comes to the word, you don't want to spectate and just sit there and hear a good speech, hear a good sermon, and you can actually activate your faith by talking back. Amen, when you say that, you know what it means? So be it, so be it in my life. It is saying, I agree with that word, I'm taking that, and I'm applying it to my life, and it will help you be able to focus, it will make it a lot more fun. So you can say anything, watch, it's like, say yeah, yeah. say okay. okay, say go ahead, go ahead. say he's going in. I, I get these phrases, I call it my swag vocab, and I'll say these things, and I'm going in. I've probably said this like 500 times, so like, I'm about to go in, and it's going to be good, but hey, um, 
for real though, I do believe this, that I believe if you will pay attention for the next 35 minutes, that God is about to sweep across this place, and some of you will never be the same again. This is what I love about Jesus. One of my favorite things about Jesus, of a million of them, but one of my favorites is this. No matter where you were at when you came into this camp, maybe you didn't know Jesus before you came in here. Maybe you've been mature and you've been following Jesus for a long time. There's always a new level. Like, you ever get bored with something? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're just like, oh, I'm just kind of bored of this. Like, Mario Kart or something? I don't know. That's the first thing that popped in my head. When it comes to serving Jesus, I want you to know you will never ever get bored. The Bible says he takes you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, which means there is always more. So I want you to know wherever you came in tonight, man, let's get some more. Like I need God. I've flown all the way from Dallas, Texas, because I need a word from God. And I really believe this, that if for the next few moments, you just pay attention, maybe say, take some notes. They say note takers or history makers, first, first ones to get into heaven. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. I think that's, in, uh, I think that's somewhere in the Bible. Uh, Cameron 1-1, one, one, I'm just joking. Uh, Lord, forgive me for that. But for real, if you would just pay attention. I know sometimes it's hard not to talk to the people next to you. But you know what I found? Sometimes it's hard for me to want to pay attention when I feel the Holy Spirit trying to do something in my life or do something in my heart. So you know what my natural response is? To almost try to ignore what's happening. So then I start to talk to other people around me. But I want you to know you don't want to be someone that gets in the way of what God's trying to do in someone's heart. That's not fair. Like that's really, really not fair. So make sure you're paying attention. Let's watch what God does. And I believe this, that you will never be the same after tonight. So we're going to go to a scripture in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. It's going to be up here on the screen. 2 Kings. That's, a old, that's that OT, that overtime. No, that's that Old Testament. And uh, it's, it's like the seventh book. I don't really know, but it's, in the, it's near the front. That's all I can tell you. So it's going to be up here on the screen, though, if you don't have it. So y'all ready for this? Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. Oh, he was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded. Because through him, somebody say through. Through him, the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier. He was a mighty soldier, but, somebody say but. But he had leprosy. He was a mighty soldier. I mean, he was amazing. This dude, had he was the real deal, but he had an issue. The Bible says, but he had leprosy. If you're taking notes tonight, you can write this down as the title. The title of this message is going to be Deal With It. Somebody say, Deal With It. Yeah. Will you pray with me one more time? Lord, we thank you that you're good. God, you are so faithful, God. There are people in here, Lord, that have really been dealing with pain. They've been holding on to pain for so, so long. And like me years ago, I didn't know what to do with this pain. I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know who to go to. But God, I thank you that years ago, you defeated the enemy on the cross, which means that I don't have to deal with the pain in my own strength. But God, you've provided a way for me to get through anything the enemy throws at me. So Lord, help us today be more like you. And thank you, Lord, that the Cowboys will win the Super Bowl and in 2020. In Jesus' name, amen. Some people are like, I ain't going to listen to you the rest of this message. But here's the thing, man, I'm a very firm believer that people can really, you know, you can know a lot about a person by asking certain questions that really help us know who the people are. And I really want to know who is in this room. So these are really important questions. I think on maybe like Forbes magazine, these are the most important questions that you can ask some people. So I'm going to ask some people this. Here we go. Adidas or Nike? How many people like Adidas? Nike. What? Reebok? Reebok. Oh, I don't like Reebok, but here we go. Converse or Vans? Vans. How many people like Vans? Converse. All right. Here's a really important one. Dr. Pepper or Coca-Cola? That's Dr. Pepper, hands down. Here's a really second most important one, actually, probably, right here. Hot Cheetos or Takis? Have you ever mixed them together, had a hot talkie? Who said that's disgusting? They're delicious. So, and now the most important question of all of them. How many of you 
are ones that get up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water are the ones who just can somehow sleep through the night and you don't have to get up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water. How many people get up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water? Now, let me, let me explain this because this has a purpose, these questions. Now, for me, I'm someone who gets up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water. It's just kind of how I do it. I, I feel like the Lord's still working on me, and I know I'm supposed to get a glass of water and put it next to my bed to make it easier, but it's just he's still working on me, having had breakthrough in that area. I always forget because I work hard, and I get tired, and I go to sleep. But many times this has happened where I get up in the middle of the night. I'm a little groggy. You know, I'm pretty tired and I'm walking through the Amazon of my house and I'm going and I'm stepping over. Our, I got two pit bulls and they're amazing and they're following me everywhere. But as I'm going and I'm walking to the fridge, there have been multiple times that as I turn a corner a little bit too tight, like a car that turns a little too tight and it, it hits the curb, my little pinky toe hits the wall. Anybody ever have that happen? I'll tell you what. And this is what happens when I do this. I let out a scream, very similar to this, ah! and I let out this scream because when I have pain, I can't sometimes help but to let out a scream, right? But have you ever noticed this? Have you ever stubbed your toe or maybe done something like that in front of other people, and instead of letting a scream out or showing your pain, you actually try to hide your pain? Do you know what I'm saying? Isn't it funny that if I'm by myself, I will let my pain show? But when I get around other people, for some reason, I just try to conceal it, and I don't want other people to know that I'm in pain. I remember one time I had just baptized some people at the church, and we were baptizing. Anyone seen that baptism video where that guy's like choke slamming the guy? That's how we baptize at our church. And I'm just like, I'm just joking. But I was doing it, and I was baptizing them, and then I was walking back, and I remember I stubbed my little toe on the corner of, the little, of, of one of the walls as I was walking back to change, and like I had to hide it. And like... I, I don't even know what I did. My face was where people were talking to me, but I was like trying so hard to hide the pain. What's crazy is the same pain that I'm feeling, I will handle it different ways depending on where I'm at. So I can have a hurt toe, but I'm in front of people and I will sit there and I'll not try to show it at all. But when I have pain and I'm by myself, it's crazy how it's so much easier to let it out. You know, pain is actually a really good thing. Pain is an indicator that there is a problem. You know, without pain, I wouldn't know if there's an issue whatsoever. How many people have ever hurt like a broken bone, maybe stepped on something, done something? You know what the pain does? It lets me know that there is something that I need to deal with. There's something that I need to deal with. When I get into trouble is when I have pain that I do not deal with. And I'm talking about physical pain being a little bit silly, but there is a big difference between physical pain and internal pain, pain on the inside. And I think there are a lot of people tonight that maybe you're like me and like I've been in the past and I still am today where I have a lot of emotional pain. You know what I'm talking about? Pain from things that have happened in our past, pain from words that have been spoken over us, pain from regret, pain from these things, pain from hidden sin, from addictions, from all of these things. I want you to know if you are dealing with pain tonight, a lot of times our natural response is to ignore it, but I want you to know if we ignore it, what will happen is it will eventually take us out. I've seen more people get taken out from their face simply because they have not known that they have to deal with their pain and they try to ignore it and they try to hide it. But what happens is instead of letting it just go and thinking it will go away, it ends up crippling them in every single way. We can't sit there and ignore our pain. I'm telling you something tonight. This is what I think God wants us to do. He wants us to deal with it. You see this guy in the Bible that we were just reading about, his name is Naaman. That's a good name. Somebody say Naaman. Now, the thing about Naaman is Naaman was a bad man. I'm talking like this dude was a bad, bad man. This is what it says as we learn in this scripture in First King, or 2 Kings chapter 5 that he was such a crazy fighter that he was second in command of the whole army. This is what that would mean. Besides the king of Syria, he was the one that was second in command. So he had all this power. But not only was he second in command, the king actually liked him. Anyone ever worked for a job and you're like, man, my boss hates me. This was not it. Like, his boss loved him. Hashtag job security. You know what I'm saying? He had massive job security. But not only that, the people loved him. Everyone in the nation loved him. He had it all 
going on. And he not only was he this, that, where everyone loved him, he was a mighty warrior. I mean, he would whoop anybody and everybody. He's like Muhammad Ali mixed with Floyd Mayweather, mixed with Conor McGregor, mixed with, mixed with Bruno Mars. I'm just joking. I don't know. I couldn't think of anyone. He was a bad man, but you know what's crazy? He had all of these good things going for him, but when he got by himself, he was stuck with a secret. It says this in the Bible. He had a lot of pain because he had leprosy. He was a leper. What was leprosy? Leprosy was a disease in the Bible, and it was a lot of times they would correlate it with sin, but in reality, it was this disease, and what would happen is it would start with little wounds, small little lesions, and they would grow to the point where it would actually end up taking off limbs of their body. Like, it was disgusting, and it would take off limbs of their body, and it would always eventually lead to death, and it would lead to death, but not only did it hurt physically, emotionally, it was terrible because if people knew that you had leprosy, you would be an outcast to society you would looked on as cursed you would look to be looked on as unclean and dirty and you would be looked on as somebody who didn't deserve anything you were at the lowest part of society so we have this man who was on so high up there I mean he was so loved by everybody but he was stuck with the secret you ever have so much going for you on the outside but when you get by yourself on the inside, it's almost just like, man, I, I'm really good at letting everybody else think I'm great. I'm really good at making everybody else thinking everything is okay. But when I get by myself, and like Naaman, I'm great. I have armor that covers the wounds that I'm actually going through. But I'm really, really good at making everybody think everything's okay. But deep down, I'm really broken. You see, the biggest thing that we need to know again is that we cannot sit here and hide our pain. This is what Naaman was. He was a master at hiding his pain. Many people in here, maybe we feel like this. We're a master, a master at hiding our pain. But I want you to know, if we want to move forward with Jesus and we want to step into everything God has for us, we can't sit there and hide it anymore. Tonight, this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to deal with it. I was hoping you'd say it, but it's all right. We got to deal with it. Somebody say, deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. So Naaman was a bad man. He had power. He had popularity. But he had a massive, massive problem. See, I, I just cannot imagine how conflicted Naaman was. And I know a lot of people in here, maybe just like I've been, in some ways I still am. I still relate to Naaman in a lot of ways. But we're so conflicted because simply this, we fall under the pressure of when we get in front of our friends and our family and the people we know and the people we walk through the halls with and the people at our job, we want to put on the mask and make them think that everything is okay. But it's crazy that I can be so loved on the outside but by everybody else, but on internal internally so broken on the inside almost mad at myself this is who Naaman was you know how crazy Naaman was as such a good fighter he's such a good fighter that he won a war his whole nation beat the nation of Israel through him he was a bad man he could help everybody else but he could not help himself you you ever felt so helpless so hopeless so broken so injured so lost that you did not know what to do this is where he was at and he was great at helping other people but when he got by himself he was stuck with his secret that there was nothing in his own power that he could do to help himself you know what's crazy a lot of times about Christians sometimes as Christians we can think oh I'm a Christian so everything's going to be great but you know what even as Christians I found this I can be winning on the outside but losing on the inside and I found that no matter how much I feel like I'm winning on the outside and know how many good deeds I do and good things I do it will never be able to outweigh the pain that is in my heart that I leave not dealt with there's no nothing that will be able to fix it and that's where this man was at but God God used this man and you know what it's so crazy that really Naaman did not even know God know God he didn't even know him but God still used him watch this in that verse can we put it back up in first Kings chap chapter 5 verse 1 go back one more or go over to the next one next one watch this because through him somebody say through him, through him. the Lord had given victory to Aram to Syria he gave victory through him. You know, this doesn't say because of him. It says through him, he gave victory. You know what this means? That he did not even know who God was. This means that I can be living in sin and still be used by God. 
I could be far by God, be far away from God and still be used by God because God is so good and this is why, because God's so good, he will use anyone and everyone to fulfill his purpose. He will use anyone and everyone to fulfill his purpose so I can be used by God but be far from him, but this is not God's heart. God wants us to be close. God wants us to be near. God wants us to really know him. What I've found helps and takes out young people more than anything and keeps us at a distance from God is the fact that when we try to come into his presence, we try to act like we're worshiping him, when in reality, all we're thinking about is whatever thing is hidden in our heart, the thing that we don't want anyone to know about, and he can lift up our hands in worship, when in reality, our heart is closed off because we're not dealing with the things that we need to deal with. We got to deal with it. Somebody say deal with it. it. We got to deal with it. I wrote this down. Some of the greatest breakthrough isn't breakthrough in public, but it's going to be breakthrough in our private life. And what I was praying for this whole weekend, I was like, God, let this not be just something where people just come up here and ring a bell just to ring a bell, but let it be a really an expression. I know this is Pastor Evan's heart of what God's really doing on the inside of what God is really doing on the inside. We cannot deal with what we constantly cover. You see, that armor that Naaman would wear, it was the thing that let everybody know that he was second in command. It was the thing that let everybody know who he was and how great he was. But it was the same thing that covered all of the pain that he was going through. I know he, we're talking about armor for Naaman, but for you, what is your armor that covers whatever it is you're trying to hide? What is your armor? Is it maybe your humor? Is it your grades? Is it addictions? Is it drugs? Is it, it can be anything. Relationships, I'm telling you, we can use anything as armor. We have to be careful because this man had leprosy, but for a lot of us, maybe it's not leprosy, but maybe it's depression. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's cutting ourselves. Maybe it's these things that we don't want anyone to know. So all we do is we put on this armor to try to hide it. But I want you to know something. Tonight, God isn't looking for to come after the public version of you. No, he wants to come after the you that gets behind closed doors, that feels like no one is going to love you, that feels like you are just stuck by yourself, that feels like you don't know how to deal with it, God wants to help you tonight. He wants to help you deal with it. God wants to help you deal with it. Deal with it. So tonight I'm asking not how do how people see you, but who are you when no one is looking? We know this verse, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. God cares about the heart. And tonight, I really believe this, that God wants to deal with the hidden you. It can be anything. I mean, there are people in here, maybe you're struggling with pornography. Maybe it's been years. Different addictions. I want you to know God wants to help you, and only God can help you. And we're going to talk about this tonight, but the enemy has been defeated, which means that I don't have to hold on to these things anymore. There is a way for me to go out. So we're going to continue in this verse because I believe this, that what God did for Naaman is the same thing that God wants to do for us tonight. So after this verse in verse one, this is what happened. Naaman comes back and he's at home after a war. He takes off his armor and there is a girl that is a servant to Naaman and Naaman's wife. So this servant girl who sees him time after time goes out to war, goes out and shows everyone who he is, faking it, having his armor on, takes it off and she would see him for who she really is. So one day she lets him know, hey, I know a prophet that would be able to actually help you. Tells him this, a prophet, what was that? This was somebody who was the mouthpiece of God, mouthpiece of God. They would speak God's word. Back then they didn't have the Bible, so they, God would appoint prophet. So this was a prophet. He carried power, and she tells him, hey, if you go see this man, his name's Elijah, he will be able to help you. So Naaman's like, oh man, I will do anything to be able to get healed. So he does this, and he says, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go find this man. And he goes off on a journey to find Elijah. And where we pick up, he's pulling up to Elijah's house, going to see him to try to get healed. And this is where we pick up in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 9. It's going to be up here on the screen. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. Elijah sent a messenger to say to him, go, Wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. Huh, 
That's funny that he didn't say the Lord my God. He said the Lord his God. He said the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you wash and be cleansed? So he went down dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him. Somebody say told him. And his flesh was restored and became clean. Huh, and his flesh was restored and he became clean. So Naaman goes to Elijah. He shows up. He pulled up in a chariot and horses. In our modern day terms, he pulled up in a Lambo, you know, and he was trying to show off because, again, he was so hiding behind his armor. So he shows up to Elijah's house, and this is what he does. He's like, hey, Elijah, help me. And it says this. Elijah didn't even come out. He sent a word, though. You know, there's a lot of power in a word, in just a word. He sent a word. One word from God has so much power. So Elijah sent a word to him, and he tells him, hey, Go wash yourself in the Jordan seven times and you're going to be healed. This trips me out. I don't know if you just read this, but this dude who was dying got angry because they told him to go wash himself in the Jordan. Now, if you were this man and you were dying and you knew there was nothing that could help you, there was nothing you could do in your own strength, and he says, hey, just go do this simple, easy task, and he told you to do it, would you not go do it? It's like, what? Yes, I do it in a second. But it says this, that he got angry and he got mad. Isn't this just like us? God, we don't want to do things your way. We want to do things how we want it. Because this is what Elijah says. Oh, I have to do something in order to get my healing? I thought he was going to come out, wave his hand over me, and be able to just cast some spell, cure my spots, and I was going to be good. All the time, this is how we treat God. Oh, I have some issue, but God, if you're really good, you have to come to me. And I stand back in worship, and I just let everybody else go after God while I just say, God, if you're really good and you're really real, why don't you come to me? This is not how it works, but this is what we do all the time to God. This is not how it is. If we want to get God's, if, if we want to get breakthrough, we can't do things our way. We have to do things God's way. His ways are better than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We can't deal with it our own way. We have to deal with it God's way. Maybe there's some people in here and you've been waiting for breakthrough for so, so long. Asking God, will you take this from me? Begging God to take something from you and you're sitting back saying, I'm not moving until you take this from me. I want you to know, usually it gets taken away when you take a step. There is so much power in your step. I want you to know that God did everything in his power by sending Jesus to the cross for me and for you to be able to get close to him. That means this, that there's nothing that can stop me from getting close to God. Whatever I'm dealing with, whatever I'm struggling with, we got to know that God paid a price for us to be able to bring that to him, whatever it is. But what happens is so many people are sitting there waiting on God while God's saying, no, son, daughter, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. See, the enemy's power is over. And, but we cannot sit there and just hide our problems. We can't sit there and hide behind our armor anymore. No, there's a way for us to be free. And the only way to do it is to let God deal with it. But this is my question. Like, why were you so mad about going off and having to take off your armor and go into this river? Like, that's really easy. Go dip in the river seven times. Simple. Why are you so mad, bro? This is, I think, the answer. As I'm sitting there looking at it, I'm struggling with this. You know what I think was going on in this man's head, in Naaman's head? Because for him to have to go dip in this river, you know what that would mean? Let me ask a question. How many people take a shower with their clothes on? Nope. So what was going to have to happen with this? He was going to have to make a choice. Am I going to take off the armor, the thing that I've been hiding behind? and be fully exposed for a moment so that God could actually heal me? Could I take this off, the thing that I've been hiding behind, the thing that I've been looking to, the thing that has been hiding my pain for so long in order to let God heal me? See, he got angry because sometimes this is what happens to us. Sometimes this is what happens to us. 
we have so much fear of what people think if they saw what was under our armor, then we just sit there in our pain and say. So we stay there year after year, month after month, time after time, broken and hurting because we're so scared to take off our armor because that would mean we have to expose whatever it is we're hiding. See, this is what's crazy about this man. Because he finally decided, yes, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to listen. And he did it, and he took a step, and he had to step over the pain that he was in. You see, for me in my life, I mentioned this a little bit earlier today, but in my life, I want you to know I was so, so broken. I was a man that was a master at hiding behind my armor. I grew up in a family where my dad was not in the picture. It was my mom and my two sisters loved him to death but I needed a father in my life and he wasn't there and as I was growing my mom had to go work all the time to my two sisters or different people were babysitting me and they'd watch me well one time while someone was watching me while my mom was out of town a guy decided to take advantage of me take advantage of me and I remember in a moment I was just broken I remember I was so hurt I was so insecure I hated myself but you know what I didn't know what to do so I didn't know who to say didn't know who to talk to so time went on and you know what would happen she didn't know anything my mom so I'd go back to the same place and the same thing would happen for about a year once I got a little bit old enough I remember I just kind of realized like oh my gosh this is not okay and what happened to me is I went on this rampage of me trying to prove to all these people it was almost like I thought they would know what happened to me so I went off and I went to these things started smoking weed when I was in sixth grade my I had two sixth grades I did so good it's the first time they were like please come do it again I was like fine I'll do it again but I had to do and I, I, I started smoking in sixth grade but really what was happening is I was trying to cover this pain and I was doing all these things and I tried all these different armors but nothing nothing worked everything the world tried to tell me to do nothing could solve the pain that was in my heart and I found this after years it took me till I was 22 years old and I dealt with things in my own power and nothing ever worked I got stuck and I got worse and I got worse and I got worse till eventually I did not know what to do and I heard about someone named Jesus and I remember I came to church and it was in a moment I just realized oh my gosh I had no idea that there was a God that loved me so much that when he sent his son Jesus, he killed the enemy. So what I was powerless to once do, he gives me the power to be able to defeat. But it's not because of what I had in my own strength. No, it's because I now have the ability to bring whatever it is that my armor is covering. Whatever it is that I've been hiding, whatever it is I'm not ashamed of, I have the opportunity now to bring it to Jesus. You know, Naaman was stuck as in a choice that I was in, I remember. Because even after I was saved, though, and I felt great, there came a point where I was still hiding this armor, and I was still hiding this pain of me being taken advantage of. So for a whole year, I kept trying to pursue God. And I would, and I had these little bits and pieces of encounter, and it was great. But eventually, I was in a class time in our internship program, and I realized something. I was trying to serve God without giving Him everything. And I want you to hear me. You will never ever be able to get everything from God until you give him everything you will never know how worth it he is until you give him everything trust me I tried it it did not work it didn't work at all and a lot of times we get mad at God and we say God you're not real God you're not good God you're not that loving because we didn't listen to what he said so instead of actually doing what he asked we just get mad at him but this is the truth until we give him everything we will never know the reality of who he is. So I was 23 years old, and for the first time I remember, oh, I gotta take off this armor. And I went, and for the first time I told my pastor, never told a single soul for over 17 years. Everyone used to look at me and think, oh, this guy's crazy, he's just some crazy guy, he just has issues. Yeah, I had an issue, I was a broken little kid that had something happen to me that I didn't ask for. You know what the enemy wants to do to us? He wants to try to convince us that whatever happened to us is our fault, but it is not your fault. It's the enemy's fault, and he is under our feet. And so I'm sitting here, and I had to make a decision. And the same decision I had to make is the same decision Naaman had to make. Am I going to stay hiding this thing, hiding behind this armor, 
or God, am I going to let you deal with it? So much power happens when you let God deal with it. When you let him deal with it, you will never be the same. You know what's crazy about this scripture? It wasn't about God telling Naaman, hey, go dip yourself in the river seven times. It was simply all about being obedient to what God said. I want you to hear me. Obedience will unlock the presence of God in your life. If you want God to be real to you, do what he says and watch what happens. I was just in, we were just in El Salvador and it was amazing. There was a guy with blind eyes that we prayed for. God opened them in a moment. I mean, his mom, parents were there like, I mean, it was just one of these things, the reality of who God is. It's unbelievable. Maybe you didn't know that about God, that he's a miracle working God. This song that we were just singing about God being a God of miracles, it's not just a song. It's the Bible that anything is possible for those who believe. And I want you to know, if we will be obedient tonight, if we'll let God deal with whatever it is tonight, we will never be the same. You know, there's a lot of parents in here. You know what the older generation was told? Just get over it. That's what they were told. Just get over your pain. Don't deal with it. Just get over it. But you know what we are told as our generation, your generation? We somehow are told, oh, just sulk in it. Just use it as an excuse. Just be with it. See, one generation tried to ignore it. The other wants to use it as an excuse. But God's way is simply this. No, don't ignore it. Don't now use it as an excuse. You got to deal with it. You have to deal with it. Let me read you one more scripture. One more scripture says this in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 through 30 in the message version it's not going to be up here on the screen but I want you to listen to this are you tired worn out burned out on religion come to me get away with me and you'll recover your life I'll show you how to take a real rest walk with me and work with me watch how I do it learn the unforced rhythms of grace I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. See, the God that we're in here to worship tonight is in no way a God that wants us to sit there and try to carry the burdens of the past mistakes, past regret, shame of addictions, whatever it is you have been facing and battling, whatever it is the armor has been covering in you. I want you to hear me. God does not want you to carry it. We're going to have the band come on back out. You've been trying to fight this thing in your own strength, and I want you to know it will never work. It will not go away. The only thing, the only way to get out of it is to go through it. You can't go around it. You can't turn your back on it. The only way to get out of it is to go through it. And tonight, this is what I believe. To deal with it is really pretty simple. It's not me having to do 10 things. It's not about going to the Jordan. It's not going in this hot springs pool and dipping seven times. Actually, that's what we're going to do after this. Let's go dip seven times in here. No, that's not it. It means this. God, I'm being real with you in this moment. This is what I've been facing. This is what I've been dealing with. This is what I've been hiding from everybody else. And when you get real with God, and just like the scripture says, you come to him just as you are. I said this when we were meeting earlier today. This is relationship with Jesus. Come to him just as you are and let him change you. Religion tries to say, no, you got to deal with it in your own strength. But this is the gospel. We didn't have the power to do it. We don't have the power to defeat the enemy. So Jesus came and defeated the enemy for us. And this is why everything changes. I'm changed. And now the enemy is changed because he had no longer has power over me. And he no longer has power over me. And I promise you something. He no longer has power over you. Will you stand up with me right now? Thank you, Jesus. I believe this, that God's about to break out in this place. I believe there's going to be sweet moments where some of you, for the first time, you're going to really feel the reality of who God is. Some of you, for the first time, maybe you're going to get real with God. Then maybe you're going to tell somebody about things you've been struggling with, whatever you've been hiding behind. I want you to know God is not mad at you. He's not ashamed of you. He's not upset with you. It is not your fault. It is the enemy's fault. But that enemy has been defeated. So now it's tried to take what is rightfully ours, what was rightfully purchased on the cross, which is freedom. 
You see, freedom isn't me always being perfect. It's me constantly in a position where I'm focused on God. A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Maybe some of you, this is the day you're getting back up. It's time to get back up again. It's time to worship God again. It's time to give him everything. Come on, every hand lifted in this place. Every hand lifted. We do this as a sign of surrender. I just want you to close your eyes. God, we just give it all to you right now. Come on, in your own heart, why don't you just let God know? We all have stuff we've been hiding. We all have things. Maybe it's people pleasing. I have so much people pleasing in me, and I put on different armors to try to hide it, but it's there. God, I give that to you tonight. Whatever it is. No matter if it's small, no matter if it's a big thing that you've been hiding, whatever it is, just give it to him right now. Come on, just close your eyes. Just talk to God. Just tell him, God, I give this to you. This is it. This is it. God, we give it to you. We want you. We want the reality of who you are. We love you, Jesus. Come on, let's worship God as we give everything to him.